want to talk about Elvis tonight. Yes. And so now, hold on a second here. What am I doing? Oh, hold on. Hold on, Emil. Let me just, I've got to readjust something here. Hold on. Hold on now. I had to do some myself. (laughs) Okay. I think we're going to go now, right? That sounds great. Well, I'm glad you approved. (laughs) (laughs) I am the producer of that show, you know. (laughs) Okay. There you go. It's 4 o'clock in Los Angeles, it's 6 o'clock in Chicago, and it's 7 p.m. in New York City. Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Mad Dog Scipio, and it is, it is Tuesday night, January 10th. Amelia, what time is it? What's the buzz time? It is what's the buzz time. (laughs) Indeed it is. We are uh, psyched, jacked, stoked. Use whatever adjective you want. We are excited tonight. we got a special show. It's Elvis week here on What's the Buzz podcast, and tonight I got a uh, a fascinating young man. And I say young, I mean he's young. He's like <laughs> really young. His name is Nathan Pidorf. He is an Elvis tribute artist at the ripe old age of sixteen. And if that weren't enough, he's also a Buddy Holly tribute artist. Yep, the kid is a double threat, double trouble. And tonight we're going to get into the mind of a very young. Uh, Elvis tribute artist and find out what it is about this guy has been, of course, long gone for almost 46 years now. 
47 years, and we got to think to yourself, Nathan wasn't, was, he was barely a gleam in the reverend's eye at the time. So we got to figure out, like, what is it about Elvis that, that uh, gravitated to this young man? And, and well, let's just ask him right now. Nathan, welcome to the show. Yes, How the welcome. hell are you? And uh, don't be nervous. There's only a half a million people listening to your voice. <laughs> Don't scare him off now. <laughs> no pressure, that's all. Well, I'm doing I'm doing good. And um I'm hoping I hope you guys are doing well as as you are. Um but what really got me into it was uh growing up on the music. Uh I was raised on that fifties and the sixties kind of music from all different artists of that time. And right. uh well, my dad was always a uh, Elvis fan when he was a kid, too. He was grow, uh, raised on it. But then I started going to Elvis Week, and my parents been going for a long time, too. Um, and so when I was at, uh, when I was born, I started going to Elvis Week. And every year, it was, you would watch those guys get up on the stage. They would have an outdoors tent. And yeah. it was a hot one during those times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but... Um, you would watch the I guy remember guy. those days well. I, I'll tell you what, Nathan, I remember those days well. Um, I'm a few years older than you. Uh, I'm not going to tell anybody how old I am because they, they watch the show. They know I, <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> but I will tell you that some of the best tribute artists in the world are people who perform under those tents every week. Uh, at at uh, Elvis Week, I mean every year at Elvis Week, um, there's a young man. Uh, he was a friend of mine for a little while. His name was E Rock. Do you know who E Rock is? Yes, yes, I do. E, e Rock is one of the best. He's good, good, good guy. He's a good guy, but he's also a talented guy too. Um, Eric Hawes, his name is. Uh, Eric is a very talented guy. Um, some other people you might have seen there: Bill Cherry, people like. Uh, uh, Dwight Eisenhower, uh, Ted Torres Martin. Um, we this show is uh, is very good friends. In fact, part of our our network here, I'm very proud to say, Pete Wilcox, one of mm -hmm. the very first Elvis tribute artists, is a friend of our show. Yes. In fact, we used to do a show together. He and I uh, spoke to him on the phone. I spoke to him Saturday. Mm -hmm. We were going to try and get him on here, but he's got a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, but yeah, Pete Wilcox, one of certainly one of the very first Elvis tribute artists for sure. Legit. He was doing Elvis when Elvis was still alive. So who are some of the people, Nathan, that, that you admire as, uh, an Elvis, uh, tribute or sound alike or look alike? Well, one of the biggest that I love watching and that helped me big time every time I got to see him and would help me give me a lot of pointers and a lot of tips on how to become uh to be where i am right now and further and a lot of times when we meet we always we always did bossa nova together a lot of times at elvis week that's uh, a big song we do together but his name's dean z oh uh, dean z oh my god please yes oh, uh, he's a legend he's legendary in the, in the elvis world dean z by the way is the official Elvis of Graceland. Yes. He is uh, He is the guy. He's the go-to guy. Priscilla Presley uh, liked him a lot. Lisa liked him a lot. And, uh, and everybody at Graceland loves this guy. Dean Z is one, of, is one of, if not the best. Certainly from a vocal and, uh, and physical standpoint, you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody... Um, to beat Dean Z, it may be, and, and this is pushing it, but maybe, um, Bill Cherry, uh, maybe Dwight Eisenhower, Doug Church, but you'd be hard pressed. Um, we have somebody in our chat room going, uh, let's go, Nathan Pitoff. That's, uh, Mike Two Bills. I guess you know who Mike Two Bills is. <laughs> There you go. Mike, he's with us, Mike. Don't worry. I'm not going to hurt the kid. I promise you. <laughs> not going to hurt him. He's a good kid. So, 
Um, Dean Z is certainly a guy. If I'm going to take advice from somebody, that's the guy. How did you get to know Dean? Well, Dean is a great guy. He wants to talk. He talks to everyone. If you get a chance, he'll always be there next to stage or after the show. Even if he's taking down equipment at a show, like getting done and everything, he'll talk to you for a couple minutes or so, or however yeah. long, uh, you know, when he's got time. So being a young tribute artist and you, a lot of these big ETAs watch us grow, uh, like grow up and become big and they want to help out a lot and to make sure we stay on the right path and to make sure that Elvis's legacy is in a great hands. And Absolutely. Uh, when uh, at the original, at the, um, at the tent, uh, Dean Z actually said that to me, he's like on stage, he's like, we're doing bossa nova. And he says, I can see that Elvis's legacy is in great hands. And I was only about 10 years old at that time. Good for you, brother. Aww. Good for you. I have a, uh, a, a special um, surprise for a young man. Uh, my co-host, Amelia, has a very special connection to Elvis. You want to tell uh, our young friend what your connection to Elvis is? Yes. Uh, my husband used to uh, do say yard work there in Graceland. He was oh, hired wow. there. Her mm -hmm. husband was a groundskeeper in yeah. Graceland. Yeah. Her husband, wow. Jeff. Yes. And uh, he uh, worked the grounds, and actually he got to meet Priscilla Presley and um, was offered a job and there. And he made the mistake, Jeff made the mistake <laughs> of asking Vernon Presley, how did Elvis die? <laughs> that was a big mistake. Apparently, he got Vernon very angry. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to get Elvis's daddy angry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And he was offered a job there on Graceland to stay on there, but he had other bigger contracts, of course, that uh, he Boston had. Boston so Spencer is joining us. Boston. To... How are you, brother? <laughs> Our friend Boston from Boston. <laughs> Boston from Boston. Hi. Yep. <laughs> Indeed. So, um, my friend Boston's here. It's good. Brother, stick around with us. We've got a fun yeah. show tonight. Talking about Elvis's birthday bash. Mm -hmm. Gonna be a good show. So, let's talk a little bit about, because you're a young guy. Um, you obviously, you know, you, you say your father was an Elvis fan and he listens to the music. And obviously, if you're an Elvis fan, there are certain moments, certain quintessential moments that grab that, that grab you. Uh, they they take hold. It's um, and, and maybe it's Elvis from the '50s. Maybe it's mm -hmm. the jumpsuit era. Maybe it's the black leather. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the the comeback special era. Uh, what, obviously. You represent Elvis as a younger person because mm -hmm. you haven't filled into the jumpsuit era yet. Yes. But let me ask you a question. Is this, do you think in your evolution as an Elvis tribute artist, is this your comfort zone or would you like to expand maybe your repertoire a little, a little deeper, a little uh, expansive maybe? Would you like to try the black leather and the jumpsuits? Yes. Um, so where my vocals are at right now, they are great for the 50s. So like your mm -hmm. Sun Records, your RCA, and plus my body posture, like my uh, mm -hmm. how slim I am or how I move big time, uh, being so young and flexible and all that still. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, It's so easy to do a lot of those 50 moves that would be harder for the other ETAs that are in this jumpsuit era. Or an old uh, man like me that'll break a hip. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so those 50 errors are big for me right now, but uh, down the road when my voice fully matures and I grow up a lot more uh, mm -hmm. physically and all that, I like to get further into the 68 uh, yeah. and the 70s. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, um, you are very fortunate right now because when Elvis was 18, 19 years old, he had a very untrained, high-pitched vocal that lent itself to the energy of rock and roll of the 50s. Mm -hmm. 
as I guess the sixties rolled around, and I guess as he matured, he kind of dampened that a bit with the more mature tone, and his voice as he got older got deeper, which is natural. Um, you're still in that, you know, 16, 17 year old area, you know, because it's just hard to even think that there's a 16 year old tribute artist, an Elvis guy, uh, which I think is remarkable because, you know, you are the future. Yes. You're the future of keeping Elvis's music alive. Absolutely. Um, so, Amelia, talk yes. to this young man. I'm going to let you have that now. Go ahead. Talk <laughs> to this fellow. Yeah. What was your first song that you learned of Elvis? Cool. That, uh, that was many moons ago. But um, if <laughs> Many I moons ago. You're 16. <laughs> many moons. Uh, Trade places with me, Nathan. <laughs> Um, if I remember, it was probably Teddy Bear. I would oh, have to say, uh, mm -hmm. Teddy Bear was, uh, I'm pretty sure my first one. Oh, that's, that's a good one. I like that. It was one of my favorites. We got a question for you. Uh, Nathan is a question from Boston. Spencer says, forgive me for asking. Did Elvis have a twin brother? Tell him. Uh, yes, he did. Um, of course, so Elvis's mother uh, gave birth in Tupelo at home. Um, by that time, you know, it was kind of common to do stuff like that. So mm -hmm. they, she had her birth at, uh, the birth was at home, and his twin brother passed at birth uh, before Elvis came. And so it doesn't get talked about a lot because... It's not a big topic, but that's yeah. Yes, again. Well, we're, we we will talk about that later mm -hmm. on too because we got some new information on that. Yeah. Um. So that's Boston. Boston, you got your answer from a young fella who knows his stuff. Mm -hmm. Nathan Pidor, sixteen-year-old Elvis tribute artist, joins us. A fascinating young man. Because I'll tell you what, I, I thought he was much older. I'll be honest with you, Nathan. I thought you were much older. Um, and I'm pleasantly surprised to find that you're just a young whooper snapper. <laughs> Thank um, you. I have to tell you, um, it's refreshing to see someone so young that, that cares about music of my generation. Yes. You know, I mean, I'll be 64 this year in July. Mm -hmm. And um, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody of your generation who even knows who Elvis Presley was, let alone mimic his music and 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 song styling. Which I'm thrilled. Again, I, don't get me wrong. I'm absolutely thrilled that uh, that you're you're carrying you know, passing the torch along. Absolutely. As it were. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, Amelia, go ahead. Talk yeah, to this young man. My mom says that that's when music was music, you know, back then, you know, that kind of music. Um, oh God, I, absolutely. You can I have a, the lyrics. I have, a, like, a really serious question for you. Do you believe that Elvis is still alive? No. No? I, I don't believe that. I, I believe that he did pass away in 1977. On that note, Nathan, a surprise number one. Get ready to meet Elvis Presley in 2016. You hear what I just said? Yes. Watch. Keep your eye on the guy wearing the pink shirt. This was taken at great fun, by the way. And let me show you who you're looking at right now. The woman on the far right, that is Priscilla Preston. I'm sorry, that's Lisa Marie Preston. Mm -hmm. Next to her is her father, Elvis. Next to Elvis is his butler of many, many years. And next to him is his daughter, uh, the butler's daughter. The gentleman there, that black gentleman, his name is Alfred.
And again, I own this video and I will never tell anybody how I got it. This film was snuck out, um, out of basically out of Graceland. If you can see, this is actually Graceland. There are no tour buses there. There are black stretch limos and cars, and everybody there is an invited guest. Take a look at it. At Priscilla. Lisa Marie. Mother, daughter, and father right there. And in case you're wondering, yes, Elvis Presley has a cell phone. For real. He's got his cell phone. <laughs> All those pictures that you've seen of uh, the guy running around with the white beard. Everybody's saying that's Elvis, that's Elvis. Well, there he is right there. Now, take a look at that. Take a look at that. Amelia, mm -hmm. there's from left to right. Mm -hmm. There is Lisa Marie. Alfred, Elvis, and Priscilla. And I don't whoever, care what anybody says, they still love each other. And whoever's filming is really, really nervous to get caught, you could tell from the shaking of the yep. camera. So, what do you think of that, Nathan? How's that for a mind blower? Um, it got me. I, I don't have much to say. That's real deal, kid. Mm -hmm. That's real deal. Um, Amelia, talk mm -hmm. to this young man. Yeah, I was, uh, since you're so young and everything, and I know that you're, thank you for uh, wanting to keep his uh, music alive and everything. And is there any other songs that you'd like to learn in the future or how many have you learned? Um. Okay. I've learned briefly around maybe a little over 30, maybe. Wow. Um, yeah, I would say briefly around 30. And which is your favorite one to sing so far? Um, I, I get this question asked a lot, uh, but I have to say I don't have one mm -hmm. because all his songs are great. And you know, it's funny that you say that. It's funny that you say mm -hmm. that because we just had two Kiss lookalikes on the show. Mm -hmm. We had a, a Gene Simmons lookalike and a Paul Stanley lookalike. And we asked him the same question. What are your favorite Kiss songs? Both of them have said exactly the same thing. We don't have a favorite because they're mm -hmm. all great. Yes. It's interesting. So let's talk a little bit, Nathan, about... Uh, what the future holds for you? You're 16 years old. You got a, a whole lifetime of performing a, in, ahead of you. Um, I'm sure there are things that you'll want to do. At some point, you're going to get tired of doing Elvis, and you're going to want to perform as Nathan Pidor. So um, what kind of music do you like? If you're not doing Elvis, what are you listening to? Uh Big thing I listen to, 
uh, besides Elvis music, would be other artists from that uh, year, like Jerry Lee Lewis, Buddy oh, yeah. Holly, and the other ones. But mm-hmm. a big thing I really like is the 80s country. Oh, yeah, my oh, favorite. Yeah. I love That's 80s so country. That's so, yeah. so down the road, I'd like to keep doing the Elvis stuff, of course. I like keeping the legacy alive. Uh, it's my basic roots of how I got started. Yeah. And it's just so enjoyable to do it. But I also would like to do other artists from other years like the country music and like George Strait and Garth Brooks things like that and like the Clint Black and all mm-hmm. that yes yeah yes. Nathan great. do you know who Jimmy Ellis is not off the top of my head okay if I say to you Orion do you know who I'm talking about sounds familiar okay Back when uh, Elvis died, or supposedly died, there was a um, a performer wearing a mask, performing a lot of Elvis-type music. His name was Jimmy Ellis. Um, he was a, a, a singer long before doing Elvis music because he sounded remarkably like Elvis. Because of that... He basically had no career. He sounded so much like Elvis, they thought he was doing a, a cheap Elvis, you know, ripoff kind of. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is that Jimmy Ellis sounded like Elvis Presley. The other interesting thing is that Jimmy Ellis looked an awful lot like Vernon Presley. Wow. We remember the uh, show that we did, Amelia? Yes. Mm-hmm. You, you know, is is uh, Elvis a live show mm-hmm. that we did? Mm-hmm. We talked about Jimmy Ellis. He was. I want you to do me a favor. When the show's over tonight, Nathan, I want you to look up Jimmy Ellis Orion, and I want you to listen to his voice. Okay. Okay. I'm bringing this up for a reason. Sometimes sounding so much like somebody means the end of your career and having to live in their shadow. Mm-hmm. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, as good as he is, there are certain people like Bill Cherry. Okay. He's great doing Elvis, but that's all he can do. Mm-hmm. But Dean Z can do Elvis and he can perform as Z- Dean Z. Yes. Because he's got his own voice. So let me ask Nathan Pidorf that question then. As you get older, uh, is there someone you wish to emulate or do you want to try to develop the best you you can be? So I would love to create my own music down the road. Um, like start recording and writing my own music mm-hmm. and that's what you're asking and yeah a big thing that i've fiddled with it with uh i am i'm i do vocal lessons and i do also guitar lessons mm-hmm. but my vocal teacher is great and she helped me with one of my first songs and i just we fiddled with it and i created my own song but when i wrote it it was more of the 80s country of mm-hmm. uh, style of country um, mm-hmm. of that uh, of the 80s, right? Uh, and um, I, I I like it so like that's where I would go with it. Mm-hmm. It would be that kind. Well, of style. I'll tell you what, you're on the right track. You know, people don't understand this about Elvis Presley. Uh, Elvis is often called the king of rock and roll. The fact of the matter is he wasn't really rock and roll at all. Mm-mm. Elvis was was country. He was rockabilly. Yes. yes. He was mm-hmm. rockabilly. Mm-hmm. And people don't get that. No. They, they never saw a, a white guy do it, though. They saw mm-hmm. black people do it back in the day, you know. But mm-hmm. back in the day, you know, black soul music didn't have any other name but soul. Yes. But you take country music and soul music, all of a sudden you got rockabilly. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever heard a white kid do it before. 
Um, and if you need any proof of that, then take a look at some of these here. Mm -hmm. This is Elvis 56. Of course, um, another Elvis 56. Elvis 57. Elvis from Canada. The only time he ever performed in Canada. Oh, wow. And I got it. 1957. This is a great album here. This is terrific. It's got Shake, Rattle, and Roll, Mystery Train, That's All Right, Mama, Lordy, Miss Claudie. And then the movies. Of course, you know, King Creole. Look at that, Amelia. looks like it's see-through. All right. <laughs> Honey. This How many great greatest hits albums did he have? What, say again? How many greatest hits albums did he have? How, how many greatest hits? Mm -hmm. I want to show you. <laughs> Still in the plastic, his hand uh, in mine. Mm -hmm. I got to show Nathan. This is some classic stuff here. I got to show this kid. Yeah, I want to. I was him. I was telling him earlier that the, a lot of the albums I loved the, of mine too because I love keeping them in the plastic because they're well protected that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. here we go. Gospel, Elvis loved. Go How about mm -hmm. you with gospel music, Nathan? You like gospel? Yes, I do. I like that mm -hmm. kind of a uh, year of gospel. Mm -hmm. Here you go. This is called Elvis for everybody. Kissing cousins. Mm hmm. Spin out all this stupid movie stuff. He hated these <laughs> movies, by the way. They were horrible. Roused about. Happened at the World's Fair. Girls, girls, girls. Mm -hmm. And more girls and more girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Amelia. Yes. Greatest hits album number one. Oh, wow. It's a see-through album, as you can <laughs> tell, because it's... It's a green album. Oh, yes. The album cover is green. So now, 50 Million Elvis fans, another greatest hits album, mm -hmm. by the way. These are just for, oh, by the way, yeah, Nathan autographed. Mm. Whoa. Wow. wow. <laughs> there it is. Signed. Another movie album, Double Trouble. Horrible, one of the worst. <laughs> uh, just right up there with that classic harem scarum, mm -hmm. GI blues, still got the plastic on it. Frankie and Johnny. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Nathan Pitorf, look at this stuff. I pulled out the best for you, kid. Mm -hmm. Paradise Hawaiian style. Hold on, I got I got the blue Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. Where is it? Actually, I got two copies. One is not for sale. The other one was for sale. Mm. This was a uh, radio station copy. A date with Elvis. You ever hear that one? Yes, I have. Okay. Date with Elvis. Here you go, Amelia. Oh, that's the other one. Another greatest hits album. <laughs> and these are just in the 50s and 60s. Wait till you get wow. to the ones from the 70s. Elvis is back. The army, obviously, from the army picture there. Mm -hmm. Potluck with Elvis. These are some old stuff. Here you go. I showed Nathan this one. Mm -hmm. Having fun with Elvis on stage. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's a bunch of drunk rants from Elvis <laughs> having fun and not remembering his name half the time. Here you go, Amelia. More greatest hits albums. Wow. On stage, the Vegas comeback. 1970. The Wonderful World of Christmas. Elvis Country. My mom has that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Yeah. I got some more for Nathan to mm -hmm. check it out. I remember that one. My mom played that one all the time. Nathan, am I impressing you with my my oldness over here? <laughs> yep. Have you ever thought of going on The Voice? Um, I got that question for that. Uh, Americans Got Talent, all that. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we're waiting for my voice to uh, mature so it's not mm -hmm. cracking or popping when I'm singing. 
Take a look at this album. It was only released for a very, very short time. It's called Raised on Rock. Did you ever hear of it? Yes. Okay. There's something special about this album that you, you probably don't know. Only half the songs were sung by Elvis. Wow. I did yep. not know that. Yep. A lot of people don't know that. The other, the rest of them were, were sung by Jimmy Ellis. Oh, by the way, there's something else about that. See that jumpsuit? Mm -hmm. I knew the guy who had that jumpsuit. Elvis personally gave this guy this jumpsuit. The guy's name, and I'm going to show you right now. His name was Jimmy Curtin. You ever hear that name in Elvis folklore? No, I have not. Jimmy Curtin was an Elvis tribute artist. He's deceased now. He's, he's long gone. I knew him, though, in life, and I actually held that jumpsuit in my hand hmm. that Elvis is wearing on that album cover. That's absolutely true, too. No bullshit. Madison Square Garden. More gospel. He touched me. This was an excellent album. I told everybody I'm going to take out the albums. There you go. Mm -hmm. Where, was his uh, jumpsuit heavy? That's the way it is. There you go. Back to Vegas. Promised Land. Elvis Today. From Elvis Presley Boulevard in Memphis, Tennessee. That has the, the smash hit called Hurt. Mm -hmm. Is on this album here. Here's the same album. This is the radio station copy. Mm -hmm. I remember those. <laughs> yep. Here's uh, Welcome to My World. Mm -hmm. And now these were the first albums after Elvis you know, allegedly died. Mm -hmm. These were called Memories of Elvis. Because you, you're looking at here mm -hmm. is um, Colonel Parker on the cover of that with Elvis's father, Vernon. Mm -hmm. and, and again, here's the second volume our memories of Elvis mm -hmm. and legendary performer volume one, volume mm -hmm. two and volume three. Oh, wow. There are four. I got three of them, but the guy that I know has got the fourth one. I'm going to buy it off. Of me. So let's see here. Let's put that away. We've got some more. I got some more stuff here for Elvis. Oh man, hold on, hold on, Nathan. <laughs> I got more for you, kid. <laughs> Why are you looking for those? Going back to the jumpsuit, was it heavy? Oh my god, are you shitting me? Please, oh my god, mm. that, it weighed like 35 40 pounds. Wow, I'm not even shitting. Like, how no wonder he sweat like a pig on stage. Mm -hmm. That shit was heavy. Mm. You ever picked up one of them jumpsuits, Nathan? Those suckers are heavy, man. Not Elvis's, I wish. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd be able to touch one of those. But um, I've had, when I first started off, I did do some 70s. Mm -hmm. So I've had the, uh, like, the Ucorn, uh, Ucorn, um, the Ucorn one and uh, right. the Black Tapestry and the uh, Chain Suit. Mm. Oh, okay. And, um, one second. And with the sequence, I can imagine it's heavy. Here's a... Uh, the uh, uh, unicorn one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one would have a uh, uh, not a like the belts that would become later in the mm -hmm. 70s, later yeah. 70s. Mm -hmm. on. So, oh. and then here's one of the uh, albums I have for right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, um... It's the uh, gospel one. Mm -hmm. Th that's in fact that's the one I just showed. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the the, the re-release, the one I showed you with the actual original cover. Mm -hmm. Yes. We here we go. We've got. Let me show you what we got here. This is the 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 film. This is Elvis. Mm -hmm. Here's this is called He Walks Beside Me. Oh yes, gospel album. Mm -hmm. That's from England. This is from Canada. Elvis from the Jordanaires. Mm -hmm. 
Elvis in Hollywood. Two album set. Now, Nathan, you happen to be in luck, young man, because I got something I'm gonna make maybe I'll send it to you. I want you to take a look at this album cover. Now I'm gonna show you the album. Oh. Check this out. <gasps> oh wow. Now you ready for this? I don't know. That that I, was big. <laughs> I, I I got I have a surprise for you because guess what, pal? Not only do I have one of them, I have two of them. Oh. And I think maybe I'll send Nathan Pitt or one. Yes. Thank you. You are quite welcome. It's very old and it's beat up. But it's gold vinyl and it's oh. worth a small mint. Dot C here. Uh, oh, here you go. These are from England. This is a double album set. This is from the UK. Oh, I love those that open up like that. Yeah. Here's another one. Elvis Greatest Hits from England, Volume 2. Uh-huh. Here you go. Oh, my mom this has that one. Album. I love that the front one. front and the back are exactly the same. Uh-huh. And there's here's the funny thing. There's no... <laughs> There's no mm-hmm. songs written on it. Mm-mm. You have to open it to find you, out what songs they let are. Let me tell you some of the songs that are on here, though. Mm-hmm. It's crazy stuff. Yes. My mom's favorite album. Big Hunk of Love, Stuck mm-hmm. on You, Good Luck Charm, Return to Sender, um, Love Me, Love Me Tender, mm-hmm. Hound Dog, I Want You, I Need You, I Love You, All Shook Up, I Beg of You, and... A lot of the, the stuff from the 50s, uh-huh. um, his early stuff. My mom used to dance to those every time she'd clean the house. She started dancing and cleaning. We're like, ooh, my mom's cleaning. <laughs> right? <laughs> now, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Do you have this album? Yes, I do. That's called Elvis Sings for Kids. Uh-huh. Yes, it is. And it's got, uh, well, it's got that one. Oh, from, from G.I. Blues. I've become a puppet on the string. <laughs> you can do most anything with me. There you go. Can't help falling in love and other great memories from England. Two albums set from England. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. All right, let me get these albums out of here. Hold on. I got it. I'm running out of space over here, kid. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. I'm not even finished yet. <laughs> I love looking at those albums. There you go. Flaming Star. Separate Ways. Mm-hmm. You have these? Do you have uh, these, Nathan? Maybe my dad does, but... Here you go. Volume 2, Nathan. Elvis in Hollywood, Volume 2. This is an interesting album. It's a an album as if Elvis were speaking. It's the, hmm. the guy doing Elvis on the album. He was a singer in the 50s named Ral Donner. Look him up, Ral Donner. He sounds just like Elvis, another guy whose career went nowhere. Because he sounded like Elvis. The 1956 Sessions, Sun Records, Volume 2. And there is the original right there. Sun Records, Greatest Hits. There's B.B. King, Jerry Lee Lewis, Roy Orbison, Johnny Cash, and Elvis. The five biggest stars Sun Records ever had. Now, the last of the batch. Oh, wow. Those are nice. You have many? I got like 120 albums here. (laughs) There you go. Come on, everybody. That's cool. Come on, everybody. This is uh, all the songs, Nathan, 
that were not included in the Aloha from Hawaii album are on here. This is called Mahalo from Elvis. It was recorded in Hawaii. You remember the movie Frankie and Johnny? Yes, I do. Here's the alternate album cover. Frankie and Johnny. I've never seen that one. And you won't either because it's not available. Here we go. More Elvis gospel, a double album gospel set. This is called Almost in Love. This is everybody's favorite, Burning Love. Mm -hmm. Hunk a hunk of Burning Love. Elvis Christmas album. I got lucky. Now, I want to show you that gentleman I was telling you about. His name's Jimmy Curtin. He's deceased now, but he had that that um, the uh, the starburst suit that I showed you. Now, this is an interesting one here, Nathan and Amelia. Mm -hmm. This guy's here. He's um <laughs> he's an Italian Elvis tribute artist named Emil Margi. Huh. Okay, but here's the funny thing: it's a disco album. Really? <laughs> it's Elvis Disco. Hmm. And don't laugh, but it's pretty damn good. <laughs> I can imagine it would be, especially in Italian. Last but not least, Elvis Aaron Presley, A-R-O-N. Hmm. That was the album. They did not make a mistake on his name. It's A-R-O-N, not A-A-R-O-N. Wow. Okay? So, there you go. What do you think of that, kid? That's some records for you. That was awesome. I love to see those. A lot of those still around. They are. I'll tell you what, brother. I'm going to send you a couple out. Thank you. I am. I'm going to send you that gold one. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you. This one right here. Called Elvis Now. Um, this has got some really good songs on it. It's got um, Early Morning Rain, uh, Fool's Rush In, mm -hmm. I Was Born 10,000 Years Ago, Sylvia, Until It's Time For You To Go, Put Your Hand In The Hand Of The Man, Hey Jude, Miracle Of The Rosary, and Help Me Make It Through The Night. It's very interesting, though. There's a song on here called Miracle Of The Rosary. Which Elvis doing a Catholic song hmm. was very unusual. And, and I don't know the story behind it, but I'd like to find out. Uh -huh. Very interesting, though, because he was known not to, he was known to be like a, a, a Baptist, uh -huh. you know, certainly a Christian for sure. But I'm wondering how Miracle of the Rosary got on an yeah. Elvis album. Right. Nathan, Pitorf, um, talk to me about when you're performing. Um, is it hard for you, being a young guy, with seeing you know some pretty young little girls out there in the audience there and swooning over you? Is it hard to concentrate, or are you like thinking to yourself, "I can't wait till this set is over so I can go hook up with this chick." <laughs> Uh, you, you're, you're a young guy. You got to be thinking that, right? Uh, yeah, but um, see, I know. I, <laughs> I when I'm on stage and I see stuff like that because it always happens. Um, and uh, when you get off the stage, it does too. Uh, you get a lot of uh, ladies to uh, come up to you and talk from many ages, but um. You got to keep it uh, appropriate, uh, professional, yeah. big time. Mm -hmm. um, definitely when you're in that setting of paying tribute to uh, Elvis or whoever I'm doing, uh, yeah. to not take it out of context or take it too far. Uh, well, too that's an interesting segue. Let me ask you, because you just brought something up. 
Mm-hmm. Interesting question that you brought up here. When you're performing, it's obviously it's age appropriate for sure. However, have you ever been approached by an older woman? Uh, what do you mean by that? Because <laughs> older than 16. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like somebody old enough to be mama. <laughs> I guess he's talking about like somebody my age. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, Amelia is 52, okay? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> You're 51. Yeah. You guys don't, you guys I was don't one year old. old. So, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm guessing that your mother's probably younger than 51. Yes. Mm -hmm. Say, I just made you feel old, Amelia. I know. I, I'm old enough okay. to be grandma. Because <laughs> I'm probably older than his mother and his father. <laughs> So, we've established then, I think, by by Nathan's silence, I think we've established that he's been hit on by some older MILFs, okay? So, You're so making I, me turn red. That's, that's been established categorically. Okay. So, now, let me ask you a question. It's interesting, though. You don't usually find young girls your age that are interested in Elvis music. Uh, are we seeing a, uh, a a new phenomenon happening? Are, are young girls like big in Elvis? Um, I would say yes. Uh, I've seen more people, younger, younger folks, uh, right. definitely around my age and even younger. Uh, when I go to these competitions and do my shows, if it's a car show, a uh, just a public show in general i'll actually see people stop or watch or actually uh take out time out of their day and come to these shows and i've seen uh kids around my age uh stop without a parent uh maybe there it's a car show and you just walk by you're looking at all the cars i'm performing and i would see mm -hmm. kids around my age just stop and their parents might go uh go a little further or whatever go look at more cars and they'll sit mm -hmm. there and actually enjoy the music so i have seen a lot of people a lot of kids my age and younger get interest into this music it's very it's very, very, interesting. very very interesting indeed um our friend boston spencer says uh, i see you have a buddy holly tribute artist uh who's uh of course, with the Richie Valens and the Big Bopper on the airplane. Okay, so let me ask you a question about that. Let's switch gears for a second. Let's switch over to Buddy for a, for a half a second. Clearly, when you're doing Elvis, there's a certain mindset. There's a certain attitude. Because Elvis was all about attitude. But on the other hand, Buddy Holly was very laid back and just a simple country basically a simple country boy okay um how do you prep your mind how do you adjust your your internal mechanism to do somebody like buddy as opposed to somebody like off you know way off on a different level like elvis because it, it is a very very slippery slope that you walk here uh, especially Nathan, if you're doing both of them in the same night, mm -hmm. like you, you know, maybe you do open up with Buddy Holly, then you go backstage and do a costume change and come out as Elvis. It's got to be some kind of mindset that you go through. Walk me through your process. Uh, so in a night show on a usually basis, it'd be a uh, multiple show. Uh, Elvis and Friends, we call it. And mm -hmm. it would be up to, we'll say, generally two hours. So mm -hmm. it's not actually just Elvis and Buddy Holly. I also do like the Eddie Cochran's, the Johnny Rivers, CCR, oh, wow. Chuck Berry, and et cetera. Okay. So oh, wow. it's a whole mind change with everyone. Right. But with, definitely with Elvis and Buddy Holly being my main ones and with the most songs of them. Yeah. And being back to back, of course. If 
from going from Elvis to Buddy Holly. Elvis has that, uh, like you said, kind of that uh, sass. He's got that, yeah. definitely in the early years, he's got that young teenage uh, coolness to him. But he also, when he's on stage, doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, that's where the moves come in. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, big t- uh, saying was Elvis got off stage at one of his shows he did when he first started off. And he had the girls screaming and everything. Mm-hmm. And he left the stage and the guy told him, go back up there and do what you just did. Yeah. Well, yeah. Elvis, Elvis said, what did I do? Yeah, he had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what Nathan is talking about, and this is absolutely true. Let me tell people what you're talking about. Um, the the show that you're that you're speaking about was at the Memphis Basin in Memphis, Tennessee. It was an outdoor amphitheater. It was called the Memphis Basin, and he went out there. It was one of his first local shows in Memphis. Mm-hmm. So he went out there and he was nervous. And so when you're nervous, parts of your body will move involuntarily. Mm-hmm. And you got no control over it. So his legs were shaken and his arms were twitching and said, you know, he went out there and he did his songs and he took a bow and he and the girls were going crazy. And the the guy backstage, like Nathan said, the guy backstage mm-hmm. says. Whatever you just did, go back and do it again. Mm-hmm. He said, well, what did I do? He goes, I don't know what you did, but go do it again. So his bandmates, and it's it's actually seen in the film Elvis with Austin Butler. Mm-hmm. They said, wiggle, go out there and wiggle. It's a wiggle like of hips. <laughs> what they did, um, Nathan, is they took that scene in Elvis in the movie and they put it inside the uh, Grand Old Opry Auditorium. Yeah. That's not where it took place, though. It took place outside at the Memphis Basin, which is interesting that they did that. They took a little bit of creativity with that movie. I enjoyed it, though. What did you think about the film? Uh, the film, I uh, say, in, in my opinion, was the best Elvis film I've ever uh, uh, replicated the. Uh, all the years of Elvis, because a lot of movies out there that are the recreation of Elvis are a lot, they stick with the uh, 70s. Yeah. And yeah. being a 50s uh, ETA, um, it, it's kind of like one side of Elvis that, uh, or really two sides of Elvis uh, getting messed by me in the 50s and the movies and all that kind of 60 years. Um, Nathan, so, can, I share something with you? can I share something with you, Nathan? Yes. People who watch this show know I'm a big Elvis fan, but they also know, and Amelia will tell you, mm-hmm. I don't like when guys immediately throw on a jumpsuit and jump into the 1970s. Most of them can't sing. Most of them have no stage presence. Buying a $2,000 jumpsuit because you think it's going to make you look like Elvis is a waste of your money and my time. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell everybody out there that does Elvis as a tribute, do yourself a favor, do me a favor, do Nathan a favor, and most of all, do Amelia a favor because she can't stand to look at you anymore. No. Go out there and pay your dues and learn to sing and learn to perform and learn to work an audience and pay your dues. Because just because the jumpsuit fits doesn't mean you should wear it. Okay? Yes. Do everyone a favor and learn the music. And watch how Nathan's doing it because that's how you should be doing it. I saw a guy the other day. I'm not even lying to you. Uh-oh. I saw a guy the other day, 74 years old, doing Elvis. He could barely stand up. Oh, my goodness. Okay? He could barely stand up. And I take that as a great offense. Because, first of all, Elvis died, if you want to believe that, he died young. Okay? 
Elvis, no Elvis tribute artist should should go past their forties, because yeah. that's when Elvis died. I see guys in their fifties, sixties, and seventies doing Elvis. Yeah. Guess what? That's not Elvis, because Elvis didn't live to his fifties, sixties, or seventies. At least officially, not anyway. Mm -hmm. His career okay? when he stopped singing anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah, for singing anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's put it this way. Elvis the Entertainer died, but Elvis Presley was very much alive. Mm -hmm. So let's understand that. Let's be very clear about it. Um, well, I'll tell you what, man. This was a fast hour. Nathan yes. Pitoff, you are... Uh, a young man full of of all kinds of energy and enthusiasm and knowledge. Um, do you, can you stay with us for a few more minutes? Yes. Good. Neil, you okay. ask this young man some questions. Yes. Um, uh, we'd like to um, ask you, uh, as far as, like, you know, how he was saying, you know, recording your own songs and things like that, do you have two or three written so far? Because I know you said one of them, but have you written any more since then? Um, I only have one because it wasn't that long ago when I uh, wrote it, but also reason why I don't have, I don't, because of where I am with uh, learning Elvis and all that, it mm -hmm. takes up a lot of time and plus I'm still in school. Mm -hmm. So it's time consuming of working with uh, school and then uh, working as, because this is to me, my career. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I would love to keep performing mm -hmm. for the rest of my life until I can't anymore um, and never have to really work a day in my life That's because great. to me it's just what I love doing so if I keep on doing it it would just make my life did you hear what he said folks did you hear what he said <laughs> if you enjoy what you're doing it's not work it's not work that's the truth. Uh -uh. If you enjoy what you do, it's not work. And it shouldn't be. It yeah. should be fun. It would be. Uh... That's why I do this every week, because I enjoy it. Me too. And I know that you look forward to seeing my happy little fat face over here. <laughs> it's not fat. <laughs> well, it is right now, because I don't have the beard. See, Nathan, you should have knew me when I had the beard. Because I really looked like Santa Claus then, baby. <laughs> I had a big old white beard. Remember, Amelia? Yes. Mm -hmm. But anyway. So I'll tell you what. Nathan, um, tell everybody um, where you're appearing in the next uh, couple of months. Let's go over your schedule. Where can people find you? Okay. So um, we'll start local. Um, I have a couple to make this so I don't have to no uh off the top of my head real quick like try to sit here and think um you can follow me at facebook uh instagram um that's where i post my schedules up and coming uh for shows local or even outside of the state um but uh youtube also for a lot of videos that are will be coming and promo videos and all that youtube and all that but um, the ones that I bigly, uh, really know right now uh, outside of state is, like I was talking about earlier, is uh, March. That would be the uh, Nashville Elvis Fest. Right. Uh, it's a competition. And the first week of May will be Iowa. That's Blue Suede Memories. And that's also a competition. So uh, just, just keep um, up, like, just keep uh, looking at my... Uh, media, my uh, where you can follow me. If you got any questions, or if you want to book me or anything, that's where you could find me. Also, my email you can find me at uh, that is uh, Pitorf Nathan uh, at gmail.com. You can find me at. But uh, any okay. questions, and that's where where you get the information the quickest way. Fabulous, excellent. Um, Amelia. Yes. Tell everybody what's coming up for us on What's the Buzz and on Is It Me or What? We have uh, actually going to be uh, Thursday. We're going to be speaking about the death of Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter is Thursday night. Was he killed? Did he commit suicide or was it something more nefarious? What was up at play in the mind of Aaron Carter? Pop star, 
mm-hmm. singer, idol to millions of teeny bopper girls. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, uh, a 34 year old young man dead for apparently no reason other than um, perhaps his own demons got the best of him or perhaps someone else's demons did. Mm-hmm. So we will find out what happened to Aaron Carter. We will also feature next week our new show, The UFO Cover-Up. And uh, if you want to know what that's about, let's take a look at The UFO Cover-Up. Love us some flying saucers. Yes. This joint. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially when they come out of the water. <laughs> That's yeah. my favorite. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Blue Collar Chaos. Mm-hmm. That's our, our new show. We're going to, that's a no holds bar show. You got to be over 18 for that one. Right. <laughs> so that, that I might burn your ears with that one, kid. <laughs> Blue Collar Chaos. What's it like to be a working stiff today in America? Well, I can't use the words because they're young, <laughs> young underage uh, young mm-hmm. man here. But I'll tell you what, I'm just thrilled that uh, we had Nathan Pidorf with us tonight. Mm-hmm. Nathan, I wish you the absolute very, very best in your endeavors. Mm-hmm. I want you to stick around with me after the show. I want you to give Amelia mm-hmm. your contact information. I'm going to send you out a couple of albums. And, um, uh, and uh, maybe you can... Uh, you know, listen to them, enjoy them a little bit, and uh, well, what the hell, <laughs> right? So, um, Nathan Pidorf is a Elvis Presley Buddy Holly tribute artist, he is available for bookings. Mm-hmm. Reach him on Facebook at his Facebook, Nathan Pidorf, P I T T O R F. Uh, again, Nathan, give everybody that email address one more time, please. Uh, my email is Pitorf, P I T T O R F. Nathan at gmail.com. Also, I forgot to say, was uh, I do have a website too. You can uh, get uh, my father's uh, contact information, of uh, uh, phone numbers, and that. And my email is also on there. So if you ever have to go back and check, terrific. And you got NathanPidroff.com. Yes. Excellent. NathanPidroff.com. And uh, again, uh, Nathan is only 16 years old, but he is. Uh, the new breed of Elvis tribute artist. He is keeping the music of Elvis Presley Absolutely. alive yes. for the generations. Latest. And I'm, I for one, I'm thrilled. Mm-hmm. I really, really am. It's nice to see that somebody young listening mm-hmm. to music you can understand. Yes, that's what my mom. That's my mom's exact words. You can actually understand the music. I the have a, a 23 year old daughter. I have to ask her what are they saying. I know. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> And and then I go, never mind. Forget, forget yes. that I asked. Because every music. other word is the f bomb. It's like yeah. you know what? Mm-hmm. That's not music. Yes. And thank you, Nathan, for also because you're keeping the music alive, and that's when romance music was romance Absolutely. music, and it's you could actually dance to it and understand it. And we'd like to hopefully have you back soon and maybe sing some songs for us. Oh, we're going to have Nathan back. Absolutely, yes. we'll have him yes. back for sure. Uh, I like to say uh, thank you, thank you so yes. much for having me today. And this absolutely, was, this it was, was an awesome. absolute pleasure. I'll tell you what, I'd like to have a hundred guests like you. You're mm-hmm. a fine young man. Very, um, very I feel good. like uh, I feel like Ed Sullivan <laughs> when Elvis appeared on the Ed Sullivan show. This is a fine, fine <laughs> young man. Uh, but, uh, fine young man. <laughs> but uh, I like to say it was a great honor, a uh, great honor to be part of this today. But, it was an honor for us, my friend. Yes, I'll tell you what, you, um, you. you're you're a uh, an incredibly talented, very bright, articulate young man, mm-hmm. and you will definitely be back here for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, we are going to say good night to everybody, but stay with us. I want you to to uh, get with Amelia mm-hmm. and give her your info for Nathan Pitor for Amelia the Pitbull Chapman. <laughs> I am the Mad Dog. How baby, it's time. <laughs> for us to go buzzing.
Take and care, happy everybody. birthday to my son, Joseph. <laughs> oh, birthday time. Yes. <laughs> Why'd you say that? I would have got that earlier. <laughs> hey, I had to get it in. <laughs> Joseph, your mother screwed up again. We'll see you <laughs> Good night, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>